The Scrum is here to dig into all of the latest federal budget follow. Joel Denis Bellavance is the Ottawa Bureau Chief for La Presse. Najud Amelis reports on the economy for the Canadian press. And Paul Wells is a journalist and author of the new book, Justin Trudeau on the Ropes, Governing in Troubled Times. Destined to be a bestseller. I've read it. It's great, everybody. Hi, good to see you all. Good to see you. Uh, Thanks, JD, I'll, I'll start with you. And I'm going to start on this op-ed from Pierre Polyev because I can't remember the last time I read something like that from a political from a political leader. Why do you think he wrote this and wrote it now? That's a very good question. I guess he might be looking for uh, volunteers in the next elections. He wants the business people to go and knock on doors and sell the conservative policies, <laughs> <laughs> elect uh, Pierre Polyev to ask the tax. But n n getting apart, I think Mr. Polyev is sending a signal that he will not defend the business interests unless the business interests def defend their own interests with the people of Canada. So he still trying to project the image that he will be defending the interests of the little person, the ordinary person in Ottawa and not the big business. So this is a government supposedly in waiting, but there's not putting a lot of uh, policies up in the window for the business community at all. Yeah, but they are, I guess uh, he is, uh, Najud, explicitly saying like, here's, I guess, what I won't do and what I will do. And I mean, the, the degree to which he named the organized, like he, the, the headline is fire your lobbyists. Like he, do, he doesn't make any bones about it. Do you think corporate Canada is on edge over that? Or do you think politically it's, it's meant for that to be the case? Yeah, I mean, this is not the first time he kind of has leaned into that rhetoric. Obviously this time he's naming names, which I think partly might be, you know, something personal in terms of his own gripes of, you know, big companies not necessarily, uh, not necessarily calling out the, the Liberal government on, on, on things that they don't agree on, of taking more of a, of, a, of a friendlier approach with the Liberal government, and he doesn't want them to do that, and so you see some of the names that pop up. But um, uh, on the other hand, I mean, there's, there's what you put out in, in public and what happens behind closed doors, and obviously Pierre Polyev, um, has, his message has been has been one of that is quite popular like leads into populism it leans into the anger and frustration of the average person but at the same time it's not like there aren't people in his office or around him in his caucus that are meeting with the exact same people that he's calling out here so or who themselves were exactly. formerly well, lobbyists yeah. right exactly. yeah um uh, paul on the capital gains part like part of this is is almost a response to capital gains because the liberals have I think part of why they took it out of the overall bill was to use it as the wedge they had hoped it had been against the Conservatives and force them to take a position on it. He doesn't actually take a specific position on it, but he says if you're opposed to it, then like if you're doctors, then you got to tell your patients, like yeah. it's not up to me to do your work. Um, yeah, the Liberals have stripped it out so that, so that it can be voted on in the House of Commons up or down because they want to get him on the record on this. If I had $10 to bet, I would bet he's going to vote with the Liberals to raise right. the capital gains tax. He has been talking all week, and to some extent since he started running for the leadership, as the champion of the ordinary people, the people who get left out of Ottawa conversations. I know there's an awful lot of cynicism and skepticism about how much he means it and what it's going to mean concretely, and that's perfectly fair. But basically, uh, uh, in this op-ed and in an astonishing speech he gave early this week to uh, construction unions, um, he's saying um, the system is rigged so that people who are already rich get richer, people who already have power get more power, people who don't have any get ignored, and I'm going to turn that upside down. Um, I, I honestly read the speech that he gave uh, on Tuesday that got ignored um, understandably as a kind of a Marxist speech. We're going to smash the power and give it to the workers. and I. <laughs> I th don't think a lot of us are entirely prepared for what this guy is going to try to do if he wins power. Let's talk a little bit more about kind of his positioning on that, but not just Polyev's, the Liberals as well. Do you, they, they had clearly wanted to use this issue as a wedge. Yeah. Do you think Paul's, I think he's right, and I think the chances are if it goes to a vote, I would be surprised, just like on the anti-scab stuff, mm. if they voted against the government on this one. Like the political cost to them and the, the rhetoric that they've employed would be too great. Uh, you might be right, but I would still be surprised if they vote against it because that would be against their nature as a conservative party, to, in my sense, you know. Uh, but if that's the case, that's another uh, hallmark, uh, I would say, of, of uh, political uh, events in Ottawa. Uh, to see the conservative party vote in favor of, main, of higher taxes, capital gain taxes, I think the business community will go wild. I mean, I can't imagine otherwise. And 
but I don't think it will affect in any fashion the support the Conservative Party has in the polls, nor the money that they raise with Canadians. So uh, I guess the, cons the business community has to get used that it, it's going to be a rough ride for them in Ottawa. As far as the budget goes more largely, I, I referenced in the introduction, Ajude, that the NDP, in a wild and stunning move, decided to, so I, I say that sarcastically, decided to <laughs> uh, uh, support the budget. Has it done, do you think, from a political perspective, what the Liberals hoped it would? Uh, clearly not, because we've seen the polling that the, there hasn't been a big shift. But to, to be fair, I don't think the Liberals were expecting this to be the thing that just moved the dial so significantly. I think the, the hope there is to build things one block at a time and then hopefully just like how the conservatives talked about the carbon tax for long enough at some point it hit i think the liberals are hoping at some point their mm -hmm. message will hit if they just keep at it um and so i guess it really depends in, by summertime how how things change for them i think this capital gains tax thing is going to be very interesting for them uh because you know, I agree they're trying to wedge the Conservatives at the same time, it's compl complicated legislation, yeah. that's also part of it. But, I mean, that op-ed from Pierre Polyev doesn't make it any clearer how he would vote. He criticized the capital gains tax in it and said that he think he knows that this is a bad idea. At the same time, there's no commitment from him to fight against uh, the increase. Um, no, he literally said, if you're against it, you need to convince you need to make Canadians your, of your why. Case. Yeah. It will still be a, a difficult position for him to take, but either way, that fight for the Liberals is going to be one that they want to Keep pushing. Last word to you on that, Paul. Uh, one wonders whether Poliev understands um, that there's a future. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just wrote an op-ed in which he said, businesses need to start populist uprisings to block government initiatives. That is a strange signal to send if you think you're going to be running a government anytime soon. Because if anyone were to take him up on that, it would make real trouble for a government that he plans to run.